Hey guys, here's another video for you. So as the last video we saw, my friend Frank lent me the ETX, American made, 127 millimeter. And then we have the William Optics 126. They are both the same size. However, that one is a medium high quality one with the good glass. Can a Maxutov that's about the same size compete with the William Optics. So why don't we try another clear night? Although comparing to yesterday, tiny bit more windy. Saturn is just above that tree and that light, right? Let me see if it's right about there. Let's get to it. Hey guys, here's another video for you. So as the last video we saw, my friend Frank lent me the ETX, American made 27 millimeter. And then we have the William Optics 126. They are both the same size. However, that one is a medium high quality one with the good glass. Can a Maxutov that's about the same size compete with the William Optics. So why don't we try another clear night? Although comparing to yesterday, tiny bit more windy. Saturn is just above that tree and that light, right? Let me see if I'm right about there. And that's it. Let's get to it. The ETX, we are using a 38 millimeter which gets us 50 power. And then in the William Optics, we are using an 18 millimeter, which gets us a 54 power. Only four power difference. So, found it fairly easy. Let me turn off the finder scope so the battery doesn't get killed. Okay, this is pretty small in the ETX. It is fairly sharp. Uh, I do see one couple moons okay let's see the william optics definitely the william optics even at the same power seems to have a wider field of view they look very similar oh yeah definitely there's another star beside it and in here the star is 80 percent out of the field of view and on here that same star is only about halfway even though it's the same power Okay, it looks very similar. I don't think I can say one is sharper than the other. They're about equal. So let's bump it up to a different uh, power. Now it is a tiny bit more windy tonight compared to yesterday it was like a perfect night. Okay, why don't we go up to, put a 13 on the ETX giving us 146 power and then if we put a 6.7 on the William Optics it's 146 okay exactly the same so we're going to start with the William Optics this time and because we're tracked it's still in the field of view okay so now that other star that was in the field of view is practically like 98 percent just on the edge the wind's not bothering too much because I've got the fence, but it's not too windy. It has a small wind. Sharp, it's medium sized. Okay, the ring structure looks very sharp and clear. And I can even see the gap between the planet and the ring. So let's try on the ETX. Okay, it's in a field of view still. That's what's nice about these tracking telescopes. If you guys don't have a tracking telescope or a drive, you will love it. Especially when you're at high powered views. I mean, I like the William Optics because it has dual speed focus. Of course, the ETX does not. That same star is also about 98% uh, to the edge you now. The ring is also nice. I can see the gap between the ring and the planet. It looks nice and clear. Let me go back on this one, same power. You know what, it is kind of hard to tell any difference, even at the medium power. If it is, it's really, really minor, where I'm saying they're still kind of 
like a tie. I still can't tell at about 146 power if there's any difference, even slight difference. Seems to be almost equal. I do think maybe, and again, I'm gonna stress maybe, the brightness is a tiny bit more, even though it's one millimeter. Remember too, with the mirrored telescopes, by the time you subtract the percentage that is lost in the reflection of two mirrors and the central obstruction, it does lower it a bit more. So I feel that that one is a fraction more brighter, but even that's hard to tell. Okay, we are now gonna go to, on the ETX, 6.7, which gets us 284 power. So that's beyond the 50 times per inch by about 25 power or so. Uh, you know, not a lot, but we are going to its theoretical limit and a bit more. And then on the William Optics, we're gonna be doing a 6.7 with an R. Okay. I think my polar alignment is slightly off. I just guess. But it is still in the field of view, which is nice. Hmm, that's not bad. Okay, that's a nice shot. Now, what do we get? Okay, this is a great shot. But yeah, actually, the ring system looks really nice. Okay, back to this one. Okay, nice as well. At this power. Nice contrast. But I do see now a little difference. Okay, guys, so there we go. Easy test. We're now at that high power or past its limit. So on the... ETX, we're doing 284, and then on the William Optics, we're doing 288. So they're practically the same. Okay, and at this power, past its theoretical limit, I do see a slight difference. So I'm actually a little surprised. I thought this one will actually, would start beating it at the medium power, just because it is the same size. This one has the, the loss of the mirrors and the contrast of the central obstruction part and this one is a clear aperture and um, it's a 53 glass type of thing but maybe I don't know if we were to try you know an ETX made you know the ones that were made after not in the USA I guess the ones made in Mexico but I just wonder if there would be a little bit difference more in that one because most people would say the ones made in the US were made ultra good quality for this price point. So I'm a little bit surprised. I thought the William Optics would have beat it by a little bit more, but it just looks like something between five to 10%, very minimal. There is a little bit sharper and a little bit more contrast, but again, this is actually holding up pretty good considering the power we're at. And today, I don't think is a perfect night compared to yesterday, but anyway, that's it. So sometimes you never know. So I'm a little bit surprised that this one actually held up. So it, maybe some some of you guys might be thinking, okay, I want a high planetary telescope, but I don't want to spend thousands of dollars. You can find this one fairly cheap on the used market. I don't know if it's going to be China made, Mexican made, or, or sought after American made. I don't know, but it is fairly cheap and it's good for that high power planetary views but it is not good for wide views or deep sky objects. Remember too, a lot of people like refractors because they're, you get the sharpest detail and contrast. So even if you're thinking five, 10%, you know, if you want that little bit extra, maybe a pure refractor is better. Uh, the focus is much better on this one. You know, this does give you wide field of views. Could be used for photography where this one's gonna be narrow, mainly high views. But uh, that's it, guys. Hope you liked the video. And um, like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys would like to see others, videos similar to this, I am getting a five inch acro, okay? And I could try a five inch acro to this guy and see, instead of it being a high end refractor, well, just a regular 127 millimeter acro go against here that would be a good one anyway guys like comment and subscribe i'll see you on the next video if you know anybody getting into hobby please share my channel and link with them if you're on the forums maybe someone's asked about something like this high planetary telescope 
you know, not too expensive. Maybe you can say, hey, Joe did one of a fractor in a match suit of, check it out. It might be something that you want some good information on. I also have members videos, members format videos where once a month I put up a video strictly for the members. It does not go on the normal public uh, videos and it's 99 cents. Uh, if you'd like to join, that would be great. You see a video that you're not going to see. I also put the name in the description and it helps support the channel. You need sometimes to, a lot of stuff I buy to do tests and videos, reviews. It's a lot of money to do that type of comparisons all the time and reviews. Anyway guys, why not you? Why not me? Okay, I don't know if I can picture or show you guys how clear it is on a cell phone let me not touch it but this is nowhere near what I saw in the eyepiece it's the best I can show you with a cell phone and I don't know if the focus is perfect either so anyway humongous in the eyepiece sharp like a textbook I don't know if I can get it any better. Let me try. Okay, let me not touch it and see if we can good seconds of it. That's as best as I can do on the cell phone without touching anything. I think that looks pretty good. But anyway, guys, I'll see you guys next time.